Hello everyone and welcome to the next in our series of daily origami for YouTube. Today we're going to make another traditional origami project and we're going to make a snail today. Now this snail is uh, very similar to a snail I made a long time ago and I know a lot of people like that video but the uh, video quality is not all that great and I picked a dumb color of paper at the time so I'm hoping this will kind of serve as a new fun snail video for you guys. Um, for this particular one it's uh, just like regular pure origami. You just need one piece of square origami paper with no scissors or glue. I'm going to be using standard size paper which is 15 by 15 centimeters and then I'll let you guys know the dimensions of our little snail when we're all finished. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put this to the side here. I'm hoping orange will be a good color. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I use like cream or something which is really stupid so <laughs> so what we want to do is start off here first with the square base so to do that we start with our color side facing down fold your paper in half both ways here so that we can find where our center is and I'm going to do this both ways to give me the uh, creases I need and there's a lot of ways to get to the square base this is just the way I always like doing it but uh, everybody has their own preference of the way that works best for them fold it in half and then with the color side facing up go ahead and fold things in half diagonally so we just bring opposite points together go ahead and smooth down from there and then smooth out to the right and the left to get a good crease to fold it in half to be a big triangle and then just make sure you repeat that to go the other way too so we get this nice starburst of creases that run right into the middle of our paper now looking at it with the color side facing up I just want to find those mountain creases that I did first pinch on opposite sides of the paper and just kind of bring them in together and then just let everything shimmy around and smush down until we get this nice little diamond or square shape to get it all smoothed out. We're going to make sure that we've got the open flaps on top and our closed point down here at the bottom and I want to take and create kind of like a squash fold where we're going to take the side here and uh, create a crease in the middle. Now you can either go about this in two ways. You can first put a little crease to help you along or you can just kind of open everything up, make sure that the middle crease is clear depending on where you're, you're coming from here. You can just open up your pocket here and use that outer edge as a guide. If you put a little pressure on that you can then smoosh it out and you just want to line that up with these creases in the center that's in the middle here and you can kind of get it going there first and then make sure everything down at the bottom is smushed out good. So that's one way that you can kind of get everything smushed out to look the right way. Or you can go about it this way. Here we'll push all that over. I'll show you the other way with this left flap. What you could do is first put in the crease. Just fold that edge to the center and it just gives you the crease that you need for the edges to help you along a little bit. So we've got that crease first, then make sure that the center is really clear, and then go ahead and open everything up. It's just a point of preference of which way you prefer to do things. This just means it's kind of pretty clear cut of where things are in the center when you do it like that. And then just return that flap over to the side so we have a nice smooth orange surface there in the middle. Then I just want to go ahead and repeat these steps on the other side too. So you can choose whichever method works better for you to make sure that you get everything in here uh, to get that nice smushed out little kind of kite shape when you're finished here. So once you get all these folded out, you should have four flaps on each side, depending on how you did everything. I want to go ahead and make sure that I can look at the part where you can see the white. So I'm just going to take one of these flaps and fold it over from left to right, turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. You should be able to have a nice split down the middle of where all those top flaps are now. And what I'm going to do is take on this left side, I'm going to fold this top edge over towards the center so that I fold that area in half. So I'll just fold this over here towards the center. Try to get everything as smooth as you can. 
So get that folded in half. Now on the right side, what I want to do is take this edge and we're going to fold it in thirds. And we're just going to kind of start up at the top, getting that nice point going first. And then just sort of visualize the amount of space that you're creating here. So what you're folding, this area that you're folding should be about the same as what's being shown here to the left of it. And if nothing else, you can always be just a little shy of it, make the flap a little smaller, because then we want to be able to just roll this straight towards the center and have it not overlap, of course, when you do it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get this part rolled over towards the center so we can get something like this. And then I want to go ahead and flip it over here and uh, repeat the steps then on the other side. Um, and actually, before we flip it over, let's go ahead and fold this guy in half first really quick. Make that a little thinner. So we've got the third on the right side, and then this one now folded into a fourth fold over fold uh, for this left side. Then go ahead and flip it over and just repeat the steps here on this side too. Same thing, this side's going to be uh, the half and then half again, and then this is going to be into thirds. So I'll take this side first, fold over here towards the center. Don't worry about getting it too super close to the center. It doesn't have to be exact exact. Sometimes that can be really um, difficult then because then you can't get things to tuck in right. You have stuff kind of sticking out weird. So it's okay if it's not exactly right. And then on this side again, do the third fold. Just kind of guesstimate it a little if you need to. So get all that folded over. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take and fold over both of these flaps that we just worked with. And I want to um, basically get to the point where I can see, we can take that flap here and this top flap so we can get to this part where we can see that base shape of the kite with the white part on top. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side too so that we can get this stuff tucked away and we can see everything here with those smooth spaces. Now this time what we want to do is the opposite of what we did last time. Before the uh, right, the left side was folded in half and in half again and the right side was folded in thirds. This time we're going to flip it that around. So I'm going to make this side fold in half first. And by doing this you should be allowing the you know you're essentially folding it the same for both of those flaps there this one here that we're doing and then the one directly underneath it should also be a half one that we just did and so they should line up to be even. And I can just go ahead and do a third fold on this side. And you've got the third fold behind you so you can kind of use it as a guide if you want to to kind of uh, follow. You can kind of see it underneath to help you along if you were having trouble before. Get that started and then fold this into the center. Trying to create an edge that's as similar to the one that's right on top of it. Go ahead and flip everything over. Do the same thing again here. Again, now the right side is halfway and folded then in half again. And it's easy for some of that to kind of pop out. You want to try to keep that tucked away as much as you can and try to use, I've got nails so it helps a little bit. If you're having a hard time getting really smooth, sharp creases there at the top, you can use like a uh, toothpick or something to kind of help you along. And then this one is a third again, and I'll just use what I can see underneath a little bit as a guide even to help me along as I do this. And the smoother and better you do this, then the better his little antennae look when you're done or whatever you call those things on a snail. <laughs> so you should get something that kind of looks like this. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take what we've got here and take the first layer, fold it over, flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So what you should get when you're looking at things is you should have those smaller one quarter folds on top and you should see just a tiny bit behind on either side and it should be the same when you flip it over too. Now we're going to focus up here at the top and look at this uh, layer that's in the middle here to fold out a little bit to serve as a little bit of antenna here. And um, you can choose, of course, you know how big you want to do this. I'm just going to open things up and do a little reverse fold here so that I can get this pinched down in the middle and it's just folded straight out to kind of look like a bird almost. And you want to try to keep things as straight as you can. get it kind of started and then you can kind of adjust it by pulling it up and such. But You want to get it sort of going like this and then I just want to just repeat that on the other side too and you can do the same process a little bit here to try to keep it the same height. And sometimes, you know, if you've gotten lots of layers going here or you've got made things too exact at the top, some of this may not, you know, create a good simple crease. You can make a new crease by just smoothing everything out and making a new crease to fold everything in half. Sometimes it doesn't work exactly over what you might have done before. We'll get that kind of smoothed out there. So we get both of those little guys there at the top. Then we're going to take this little bit up here and fold it inwards to kind of create the head area. And I want to just fold it so that it goes not over everything because then I can't fold the other side that way. So we're just tucking right underneath itself here. And you can kind of play around with, and you don't want to make it too short obviously. We want it to be a little bit as, as even too those little antennae, I suppose, as you can make it, is a good thing. Get that kind of started there. And then I'm going to just do the same thing on this side, too. So you can kind of play around with it a little to get that kind of started. And then tuck it under. Try to keep it as straight as you can. So we get something like this. Then I can take the little antennae that I have here and just kind of angle them out a little bit more. I think they tend to look a little better, of course, when they're kind of sticking forward. So if you just pull and pinch as you move, you can create new creases there in the middle as you work. And then you can go ahead and, uh, you know, add a little different angle to one of them if you want to add a little character to your snail. But that gives you the head then of the snail. Now the last little bit is to kind of create the shell. And to do that, what we're going to do is take all this bottom part that we have here. And I want to fold up and create a crease that cuts right through where both of these little triangles of edges meet, right in the middle there. So right at that point about is where I'm going to fold up to. Now, there's a lot of paper here, so you want to kind of get it started a little bit and then fold everything up. That tip should not extend beyond the head, probably if you've done stuff so that your antennae aren't too long. We get that kind of folded up. And then we're going to poof out this section into almost like a ball shape. Now this can be tricky and, and you really just need some patience and to just kind of work through each layer a little bit. If you kind of open up, they should be the eight little layers, four on each side here. I can just kind of pull these apart as I work. And like I said, it's just sort of a process of patience <laughs> as you do it. Um, we want it to kind of come and be straight over everything here. And you can also use uh, the pressure that you get going up here to help you as you do this. But we want to poof this out as much as we can. Try to find opposite sides of these things here as you pull it apart. And don't worry that you're going to tear the paper. That's really not probably going to happen as easily as you might think it will. Um, just give a gentle tug on everything until you can get things to 
to poof out enough that we start really getting this nice sort of cool shape for the shell of our snail. And we want to try to, you know, get to a point where all of these sides pop out a little bit. And gives you a really smooshed out, poofy kind of balloon-like shape there at the back. And that should kind of give you then your finished little snail. Now he winds up being, let me tell you guys how big he is here. In terms of length, depending on how everything went for you, He's about eight centimeters from antenna all the way to the antenna all the way out to the end. Eight centimeters long. And you know, if you poof them out really good, that can be about three centimeters tall. Give you an idea of how big he is when he's finished. But that should give you our finished project for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.